All right, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about factoring by grouping. Now, what we're going to be doing today is you can factor, you can take these polynomials that we have here, and we can factor these polynomials by grouping them into smaller groups so that they are easier to factor. Okay. Now, this factoring process is going to be useful for solving. It's going to be useful for graphing. It's going to be useful for all sorts of different stuff that we do with polynomials. Okay. But we've got to learn the basics before we get to the more advanced stuff. So here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this polynomial and I'm going to split it into two groups. Again, that's why we call it factoring by grouping. I'm going to split it into two groups. 2x to the third plus x squared. Now, depending on the difficulty level of the problem, for the most part, when you split this up, it's these two left terms are going to be your one group, and then these two right terms are going to be your second group over here. For the most part, that's kind of how you split them up. So that's kind of what this little bar here is, is I'm splitting the left two terms and the right two terms into two separate groups. Okay, And I'm going to factor them individually, and that's why we call it factoring by grouping. But anyway, here we go. When you factor... You want to look for something in common. So in this case, right here, I see an x squared that is in common. Okay. Now this x squared, I'm going to take that out of both of these terms. Okay. I see two of the x's here, two of the x's here. So I'm going to take that out of both terms. Okay. Now when we when we factor something out, we are dividing this out. That's technically what we're doing. Okay. So we're taking two x to the third, and we're dividing out x squared to get two x. Okay, we're taking x squared, dividing out the x squared to get 1. Okay, x squared divided by x squared is 1. Okay, um, a common mistake that happens is that usually when I say take out or factor out, a lot of students just assume, oh, you just take it out and then you wouldn't have anything right here. No, no, no. We're technically dividing, so when you take x squared divided by x squared, you just have a 1 left over. Anyway, now on to the next one. Notice over here that I don't have any variables in common, but I do have numbers that are in common. The 8 and the 4 are, both of those are divisible by a positive 4. Okay, so the positive 4 is what I'm going to factor out. Okay, I, what I have left is 2x plus 1. All right. Now, that's one step for factoring, and I'm going to do a couple more steps. Now, notice here that this 2x plus 1 right here, 2x plus 1, and I have another parenthesis over here that's 2x plus 1. Okay, now, that's, that's on purpose. That, that's actually designed that way. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to factor one more time. It's the exact same factoring that we did up here twice, but now it's with kind of a larger group. It's with the parentheses instead of just single numbers. So notice that this term over here and this term over here, both of them have a 2x plus 1. So that is what I'm going to factor out. I'm going to take 2x plus 1, and I'm going to factor that out. Just like up here, okay, just like up here, I had x's in common, x squared in common, so I factored that out. I brought it out front. Just like over here, I had a 4 in common, so I brought that out front. It's the exact same step. We're taking this 2x plus 1. Since it's in both terms, I am factoring it out front. And then what do I have left over? I have an x squared left over, and I have a plus 4 left over. Okay? Now that right there is the completely factored form of this polynomial. Now one thing that you usually have to check is that right here you want to check to see if this is factorable. Um, this actually no is not factorable. So sometimes with these x squareds here you'll be able to factor this but in this case we won't be able to factor this so that's right there as good as we get. Okay, Right here is as good as we get with this one. That's as far as we can factor that. Okay. Now with the second example that I have over here, go a little bit faster through this. Okay, just uh, kind of another example for you guys to see. All right, so I'm going to look at these two here. Um, actually, I'm going to rewrite this. Let me rewrite this. Split that up into negative 25x plus 25. The reason I chose this example is for this second part over here. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, over here, um, I see variables in common. I see an x squared in common. So that means I have x minus 1 is what is left over after I factor that out. Over here, I see 25 in common. Now, not only do I see a 25, I see a negative 25. Now, when we factor, we always want our, our beginning number here to be positive. Now, if I factor out a, just a 25, let me show you. If I factor out a 25, this is what it would look like. Okay, if I just factor out a 25, a positive 25, because that's what I see in common there. Now, okay, that's all fine and dandy. I can factor that out, but then look, I have an x plus or an x minus 1 and a negative x plus 1. Those are not the same. I want, like over here, I want them to be the exact same. If I look at them here, they're not the same. So I can't factor them out. So actually what I did is I did an incorrect factoring there. Now I kind of did that on purpose to show you why we need to do it this way. We need to, instead of factoring out, instead of factoring out a positive 25, 
I want to factor out a negative 25. Now what happens is, you take this, you take negative 25x divided by negative 25, the result is x. Positive 25 divided by negative 25 is a negative 1. Okay, when I factor out a negative 25, it changes what the signs are here are going to be a little bit. changes these signs a little bit. But notice that when I change those signs, this group and this group right there are now actually the same. That's kind of the point. That's what I wanted. And now I take that group, since it, that's what I have in common, I'm going to factor that out one more time. And left over, I have an x squared minus 25. All right. Now, I said with the last example, whenever you see these x squared, you've got to be kind of curious because can I factor this? In this example over here, no. I could not factor that. But this example over here, I can actually factor that. Okay, this is what we call a difference of a square number and a square number, difference of two squares. I can actually factor that. What that's going to factor to is x minus 5, x plus 5. Okay, think of it, think of it this way. Okay, x times x gives me back to x squared. Okay, negative 5 times 5 gives me negative 25. That works. Now, those are not the only two multiplications that you do. You also do, um, what I'm doing here is I'm doing my FOIL. I'm doing my outers and inners. I'm checking to see if I did this correctly. Okay, so I did, uh, so first and last was the x times x to get x squared. Last is negative 5 times 5 to get negative 25. Okay, now I'm going to try the outers and the inners. The outers and the inners here. Okay, so the outers, x times 5 is 5x. Inners are negative 5 times x, which is a negative 5x. Positive 5x, negative 5x makes a 0. I don't have an x term right here in the middle. Okay, so that actually makes sense to, fo to, to factor that way. Okay, it makes sense that I have those type of factors. Okay, so I was just checking to make sure I do that, did that correctly. Okay? So again, that's what we call a difference of two squares type of factoring. And again, whenever you have those x squares, you always have to check to see if you can factor that. Okay, this one over here, we could factor. This one over here, we could not factor. If it was a negative 4, then yes, we would be able to factor. But in this case, we can't. All righty, that uh, that's factoring by grouping. Just make sure you have to do multiple steps of graphing, or graphing, multiple steps of factoring. Uh, when you split them up, it's usually the left two and the right two. Usually that's what it's going to be, uh, depending on the difficulty level of the problem. All righty. Uh, thank you for watching the video, and uh, we'll see you next time.